Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, how to weigh up funds and indeed fund managers using the well-publicized Sharpe ratio. What is it? How is it useful? And what are some of the pitfalls? So here's your choice between Portfolio A and Portfolio B. Portfolio A looks a little bit better on the face of it, a 12% annual return against 10% for Portfolio B. But then I tell you that actually the annual risk on portfolio A is 25% and on B it's only 15%. Which one do you want now? You might be thinking, mm, not sure, it'd be useful to have a number that helps me quantify which one I want now and that is the point of this thing called the Sharpe Ratio. It puts those two components together, risk and return, and says which one looks better now. Okay, so what is the number? The maths behind it, which I'm not going to spend loads of time on because normally you just get it presented to you, is the portfolio's annual return, a couple of ways of doing that in a moment, minus the risk-free rate, so it's the excess return on a portfolio, divided by its standard deviation. So to take those ingredients in turn, that one can be either the expected, so it's like a forward-looking number, or actual, almost an historic number, so there's a couple of ways to calculate it, worth asking how it's been done. Minus the risk-free rate, that's typically, say typically, the return on something like a 10-year gilt, or a 10-year treasury, if you're looking at the US market, for example. And the standard deviation is something I cover elsewhere, but that is a way of capturing the volatility of returns. So this is a number that tries to marry up returns with risk defined a certain way. Now, going back to my two portfolios then, same facts as before, which one looks better applying this number? Well, if the risk-free rate is 1%, that's an assumption, by the way, probably a little lower than that in practice at the moment when this video is made, then you would have a calculation mechanically of portfolio A, 12, the annual return, minus one, that risk-free rate, over the standard deviation, 25, and therefore a sharp ratio of around 0.44. Compared to B, similar calculation, 10 this time on the left, minus one at the top, over 15, gives you a sharp ratio of 0.6. So how do you interpret that? One way to look at it is a high Sharpe ratio is better because it suggests that from portfolio B, in fact, you are squeezing out more return per unit of risk, if you want to see it that way. As an investor, why wouldn't you want that? So what are we going to use this thing for? Well, we're saying as a blunt comparison, a higher Sharpe ratio is better than a low one. But we can go a little bit further than that here. We could say, we could assess whether a portfolio's extra returns are coming from skill or just the fund manager taking extra risk. Because frankly, one way for a fund manager to juice the fund and pick up a bigger bonus is just to get risky if they're allowed to do so. That should boost returns. But is that good for you? And we can look at the impact of adding or subtracting new asset classes from a portfolio. So how will that work? Well, let's take the first one first. The risk-free rate is 1% again for the sake of ease. A fund manager has boosted the return on a portfolio from 8 to 12. That's like a 50% increase. Well done you. But also take on an extra risk. So the volatility has been boosted from 10 to 18%. So increase in returns, but increase in risk. Does the firm manager deserve a bonus? Is it round of applause time or not? Well, the sharp ratio before was 0.7. How do I get that? Very simple math. In this example, I just took the 8 minus the 1 and divided by the previous risk standard deviation of 10 to get 0.7. If you do the Sharpe ratio after the changes, you get 0.61. Conclusion, actually, maybe not. In other words, the Sharpe ratio is revealing that this fund manager has boosted returns, yeah, maybe, but has taken on more risk than perhaps we want him to in order to achieve it. Now, what about adding a new asset class to a portfolio? Imagine you're sitting there with a kind of plain vanilla portfolio, 50% equities, 50% bonds. And purely by coincidence, by the way, the Sharpe ratio comes out at 0.5, just making up that number. And you are thinking about adding in some hedge funds and some gold, right? Now, you might think, well, it's a bit risky, but let's take a look. Um, so you're thinking of diversifying. So a bit less in equities, a bit less in bonds. Let's get a little bit in hedge funds and a little bit in gold. And you do the calculation again, the Sharpe ratio moves to 0.65. What's actually happened here, if you like, is by diversifying, you have, in fact, boosted your risk-return trade-off. So that might be not what you're expecting as a gut feel, but there we go. So the Sharpe ratio can be quite useful in that context. Now, is it perfect? Do you just go, right, well, I'll do the thing that has the highest Sharpe ratio then? No. 
got to be careful. Fund managers know that people watch these ratios so they can sort of fix them, basically. Ways to fool an investor include the sharp ratio focuses on price risk predominantly. So if a fund manager actually takes on liquidity or default risk, it may not show up in the number. Be careful there. If a fund manager tries to boost returns using derivatives, that often won't show up in a sharp ratio either. Behind the scenes cleverness, if you like. And if a fund manager chooses to publish a number by ignoring extreme returns on the basis they're extreme and distort the numbers, then you may get a slightly different answer to if you've included them. So you do need to do some homework, look under the bonnet, not only find out what the Sharpe ratio is, but find out how it's been calculated. Lots of ground covered there, lots more to know. So any questions, editor at killick.com.